Because our 40 year uh, anniversary is virtual, we wanted to ensure that all of you could be included as our partners and friends, our customer and community, and all those who have provided such exceptional support for us over, over a long period of time, uh, we have been able to achieve 40 years of amazing outcomes. Thank you so much for your amazing support over many steep climbs over many years. We plan more steep climbs in the future and hope you will join us in that effort. Thank you again for everything. Uh, we are really uh, pleased to be able to work with all of you and really humbled by the many, many years of support and commitment that you've given. Thank you. A stagnant industry, a focus on Monday, titles, pseudo success. Our industry begged for a revolution, for something or someone to change the landscape. So we did. We pushed boundaries in our field by developing world-class semiconductor materials that will define the future of tech. We introduced a new level of culture and quality to do things differently at the office, in the labs, and far beyond. Yet as technology, capabilities, and expectations continue to grow, so do we. At home in the Midwest, in Europe, Asia, and around the globe, our beliefs, cultures, and experiences will work together to create the next generation of technology, efficiency, and relationships, locally, nationally, globally. Brewer Science does this through an absolute belief in our people, commitment to our customers, and confidence in our materials, manufacturing capabilities, and ability to create. While performance will always lead the way, the smart, the innovative, and the dedicated people behind the performance will continue to propel us forward. 40 years is amazing, but like our products, our people, and our company, it's just the beginning. We will embrace, investigate, and push the unknown. Brewer Science, we're just getting started. Hey everybody, when we uh, get ready to celebrate the 40th anniversary, one of the things we really think about is at the starting point when we created our logo and selected our name. It's kind of like having a new baby and as a parent, you spend a lot of time on your logo and your name. Our logo here is a has been with us for 40 years. It was a logo that Paula designed in the beginning and it's a logo that we've kept for 40 years. So how is it that a logo from the beginning can work so well across the whole uh, range of experiences and, and the changing world over 40 years. Well, there's a couple of secrets to our logo. I think Paula did an incredible job in the design and the, uh, and the actually the execution of the logo. And as you notice, the first thing to notice is that the design is very simple. Simple, but purposeful. It has a little more than 10 lines on it and yet with those 10 lines, you can see that the logo is a bird. And you can also see that the logo is a, is a large bird, a large bird in motion, and that the bird is a raptor. Now, that's probably as far as most people get uh, in looking at the logo, but if you're very discerning, if you have a discerning eye, you can also see that the raptor is a hawk. So our logo is, is the hawk. And there are several reasons. The simple, the simple uh, outline or, or, or representation is very elegant, and, but still very, very powerful uh, uh, and very visually appealing, uh, giving us a strong visual image. The hawk was selected for several reasons. One, as you can see from the, from the um, image, a hawk, as all raptors, have large and powerful wings. So, so that is a statement of our strength 
as a corporation. The large wings means that this bird can fly very, very high. So we're both high flying and we have a long view. These are also characteristics of the company. The uh, long view has another attribute to it. And that is if you're that far up into the sky, you've got to have really good vision. Vision, strength, flying high. Those are all attributes that we want to uh, communicate with the logo, which communicates again in a very few, in a very simple way with just a few lines. So that's the main uh, reason that the logo has maintained itself as valuable and appropriate over so many years. It gives us, a, it gives a very basic statement in terms of the, the nature of the company. Now, how did we choose the Hawk as a logo? Well, we were in Minnesota, Paul and I were in Minnesota at the time, and uh, having uh, left my old career and started on this career of starting a business, uh, we, uh, we had a lot of free time, uh, and uh, some of that time would be spent simply going for walks. And so we were out at a state park in Minnesota, walking um, uh, along a river, the river had relatively high bluffs on it, so we were on the top of the bluffs walking along the river. And as we were standing there, the, this uh, red-tailed hawk came soaring by about at eye level to us because we were, we were quite a ways above the river. So we were able to get a, a perspective of a bird, of a hawk, that you normally don't see. And that moment, that, that sort of uh, mundane moment, just turned into inspiration. So that the hawk uh, in its setting uh, was simply an instant inspiration that, that I think both Paula and I took in. Paula saw the beauty of, of, the, of, the, of the bird and, and its, its, its role and its position, its place in nature. And I saw an abstract story, an abstract representation of, of the world and uh, also of business and how those all merged into a single view. So that's, that's how we selected the hawk and that's how uh, uh, the hawk was rendered by Paula's great talent <laughs> into, a, into a logo. Simple, powerful uh, uh, a picture, highly representative of the characteristics important to us as a company. The other main uh, challenge for us as a starting a company was what were we going to call it? What was going to be the name? The name came about from my as I was working with a group of people in Minnesota to try to start the business there. We had some venture capitalists and we had some uh, other uh, people that would want to invest in the company. And we were in, you know, in negotiations and all, all the time with these people, engaging with them a great deal. One of those people was uh, named uh, uh, Bruce uh, Dalton Dayton. Uh, Bruce was the head of Dayton Hudson Department Stores at the time. He was near retirement uh, and had been with them as, as it is a, was a family business for, for of course, since uh, for, for many years. The, the, the family strongly believed that if you start a business, you should put your name on it. Your name is your word. And that means that you support the, both the integrity of the company and operate the company with trust. Now that's a little bit of an old fashioned value today and you don't see many companies today put their personal name on the business. But I had great respect for, for, for Bruce Dayton and his family and uh, their view of how business should be practiced. And so I adapted that, adopted that, and uh, we chose Brewer for the name because it was it was it was our name, and it, and it, it and we were willing to stand behind it. We were willing to stand behind it with integrity and with trust. The other part of the name Science is what we do. So you have both the the personal uh, element of the name Brewer that is a really represents uh, your word and science, which represents what we do. So that's how the, that's how the name got uh, uh, selected also. Uh, that occurred after, by the way, after many card, cards that Paula created with a lot of different names and a lot of different logos. We had stacks of 
three by five cards with ideas on them. Uh, but in the end, it turned out to be quite simple. A hawk for the logo with a very simple artistic rendering and a name, which was our name. And that's how we started. And today, that logo, in both its simplicity and its, and its uh, abstractness, uh, and the name in both its simplicity and its abstractness still carries uh, and represents who we are and what we are as a company. Hey, I'm Paula Brewer, Terry Brewer's wife, and we're getting ready to talk about how the adventure of this beautiful statue of the Hulk got here and this was a special gift for Terry to celebrate the 40th anniversary for Brewer Science and all that he's accomplished in these 40 years. So we'll start out with at the beginning. Actually the, the concept of having this sculpture here in this particular area was uh, Doyle Edwards and he came to me and suggested that we you know put a sculpture up here. And so as resident artist uh, for Brewer Science, I took that bit in the, <laughs> got the bit in my teeth and I ran with it. <laughs> and the very first thing I did was to make a rather crude paper mache sculpture of what I wanted in the hawk. Because hawks do really interesting things when they're getting ready to light on a, 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 a something like this uh, stick or this branch that this hawk is on. They don't just come down and go plunk on top of it. They, they come, they go down, they go up, and they re, they, then they align themselves with the stick. This is what the hawk is doing right now. Then he would float up from here once he's got a hold of it. So this is what I wanted. I wanted that movement and that, that particular thing. And that's what the logo for the Brewer Science Hawk is doing, actually. It's not just flying, it's coming in for a landing. So that was what I wanted, and that was what I was working for. And when I finally got what I wanted in my little paper mache, then I did several drawings of it. And uh, I found a foundry in Norman, Oklahoma, the Crucible Art Foundry, and began working with them three years ago. And this is when this all started. It's been an interesting three years. So uh, I, I contacted these people, told them what I wanted, I sent them drawings, sent them photographs of red-tailed hawks, uh, talked to people many, many times, and uh, Mark Paul Merton and I finally began the journey of getting this thing accomplished. And he would send me pictures of, first of all, it was just a, a computer vision of what they thought the hawk should look like, and they wanted me to approve of this. That was the beginning. And then after we found that we had everything we wanted there, then they began putting it into a sculpt, it's a sculpted of some kind of a clay, and it was exactly this size. And uh, about that time, I was able to go to Norman, Oklahoma, once they got that all finished, and saw what it looked like, so that if I could make any suggestions about what they wanted to change, I could do that. And uh, I was just blown away with what they had done. They had done an amazing job and I really didn't need to change anything. And one thing that the guy that, that was the artist that did the sculpting suggested was that we put on this, the, this side of the little, of, this, of the stump of the hawk that's sitting on, there's a heart there. And uh, my initials and my husband's initials are there. And I thought, well, I thought that was really nice, but I thought, well, you know, I don't know whether this is too, you know, too touchy-feely for a business. And so I talked to Doyle Edwards about it. And he said, oh, no, no, that's wonderful. We're going to do that. So that, that's how this little part of it came about. And so we knew that we had what we wanted. And then after that, it was a matter of casting the, the sculpture in bronze. And that's a fascinating process. They took the... Uh, Play version of what we're looking at here, and they uh, encased it in, a, in a, a plaster, I don't know, some kind of a big encasing, and it would be really huge for this, and there's pipes coming out from all directions from this casing. Then they put this in a furnace and they melt the clay part that's already been done. 
that's melted and they pour that out. And what's left, of course, is the cavity of the shape where that hawk was. And then they begin pouring the liquid bronze into that cavity where the casting came out. And then once that sets up, they take, they break that cast off away from the bronze. And it looks not like this bronze, it's just kind of gray colored, but that's the metal that comes out and it's bronze. And then after that, they polish it and they put on what they call a patina. And uh, you can notice the highlights that some of it is a little bit of color, especially on the hawk's tail. I was very adamant that we needed a little bit of copper color on the tail so that we know that this is a red-tailed hawk because that's what the logo is. And so that's, that was the beginning of that. And then once they get it cast, and they cast it in two separate parts, they cast the, uh, the legs and the body and then the, 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 the perch with the claws on it was separate. And then they put those all together. There's a great big stainless steel rod that goes from a, probably about here up through here and then goes up this branch and then there's another part of it that goes under that branch and that supports the hawk inside of this bronze and uh, then once this was all done the next thing was to get the perch that the hawk was going to stand on and this is where uh, Dale Hobson and the people that work here at Brewer Science came into the picture they did a wonderful job they got a wonderful concrete uh, man that, uh, Chris Curley, I think was his name, that knows of, all about concrete that did this. And they have, uh, there are, there are state rods, there are metal rods in here to support it. It goes way below the frost line. This is quite a structure. It looks very simple from this point, but it's a very complicated structure. It has a hole in it so that they can just stick the hawks of uh, stainless steel pipe in there and uh, so this was the very last piece that we had to do was to get this structure built and uh, like I said Dale and his people did a wonderful job of that because we've got over 300 pounds of bronze bird here so this is no small thing and there's going to be wind that's going to blow on this all kinds of things that they anticipated so they have this good, strong structure, then that hawk's not going anywhere. It's going to be in a firm place for forever. So anyway, that was the story about the hawk and how it got here. And like I said, it's, uh, it was a, it's a monument to Terry and what all he has accomplished over the last 40 years, which has been amazing. Uh, there have been a lot of ups and downs uh, economically uh, and anything you can imagine that he's had to deal with over the time. When he started the, the company, his vision after having worked for some companies himself was to have a company where the employees could have a chance to do what they wanted with their, with their job and take it as far as they possibly were capable of doing and nobody was going to hold them back. That was a very important thing to him. And of course, you know, then to have a successful business too, one that was gonna support all of his employees, the employees who now, by the way, are part owners of Brewer Science. And uh, Terry also supported the Rolla community. He's brought art and music to the Rolla community and, and the communities around. Uh, he has supported a lot of charities and fundraising organizations in the community as well. And uh, uh, somebody told me one time, well, he has to do that. He has a business here. And I said, no, he doesn't. He has no customers here. He has no customers in this area at all in Rolla. He does this because he knows that he wants to give back to the community where he lives and become a, a part of being helpful in that community. Uh, the company is international. We have a presence in Europe. We have a presence in Asia. And all of this is because of Terry's vision and very stubborn, obstinate, won't give up, got to keep going, going to find a way to get through all this and get all this done the way it needs to be done. So this is what this hawk is for. It's for Terry and all that he has accomplished in 40 years that he's been building this company. <laughs>